Well, hello everybody, and um, I'm going to give you today's morning devotion. And today I thought that uh, I would talk to you a little bit about Martha in the Bible. And um, it's got some personal significance for me because more than once I've um, had a word brought to me um, by the Lord, but also by individuals just about being careful not to become too much of a Martha. And anybody who knows uh, that family, you will know that there were two sisters in the family, Mary and Martha. And Martha was well known as being the busy one that was always preoccupied with all the things that had to be done. And Mary was known as the one who would leave those things aside and just sit at Jesus' feet. Um, and uh, so the challenge for me in all of that has been not to become too much of a Martha and be too much of a doer. And um, I know I have a tendency towards that and I've got to watch that one. So um, I just thought I'll, I'll, I've got um, one of these massive study Bibles and it's got little character profiles in it about lots of different Bible characters. So there's one about Martha and I thought it might be um, good to just have a look at that. And um, maybe there's one or two of you out there that can sometimes be like me, be a little bit of a Martha and be distracted by all the jobs that have to be done. So... Um, this is what it tells us about, about Martha in here. It says, Many older brothers and sisters have an irritating tendency to take charge, a habit developed while growing up. We can easily see this pattern in Martha, the older sister of Mary and Lazarus. She was used to being in control. The fact that Martha, Mary and Lazarus are remembered for their hospitality takes on added significance when we note that hospitality was a social requirement in their culture. It was considered shameful to turn anyone away from your door. Apparently, Martha's family met this requirement very well. Martha worried about details. She wished to please, to serve, to do the right thing, but she often succeeded in making everyone around her uncomfortable. Perhaps as the oldest, she feared shame if her home did not measure up to expectations. She tried to do everything she could to make sure that wouldn't happen. As a result, she found it hard to relax and enjoy her guests, and even harder to accept Mary's lack of cooperation in all the preparations. Martha's frustration was so intense, she finally asked Jesus to settle the matter. He gently corrected her attitude and showed her that her priorities, though good, were not the best. The personal attention she gave her guests should be more important than the comforts she tried to provide for them. Later, following her brother Lazarus's death, Martha could hardly help being herself. When she heard Jesus was finally coming, she rushed out to meet him and expressed her inner conflict of disappointment and hope. Jesus pointed out that her hope was too limited. He was not only a Lord beyond death, he was Lord over death, the resurrection and the life. Moments later, Martha again spoke without thinking, pointing out that four-day-old corpses are well on their way to decomposition. Her awareness of details sometimes kept her from seeing the whole picture. But Jesus was consistently patient with her. In our last picture of Martha, she is once again serving a meal to Jesus and his disciples. She has not stopped serving, but the Bible records her silence this time. She has begun to learn what her younger sister already knew that worship begins with silence and listening. And uh, I'm going to read you out a couple of um, bits of scripture that just uh, talk a little bit about Martha. The first one um, is in uh, Luke 10, chapters 38 to 42, and it says this, Jesus visits Mary and Martha. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. And the other bit of scripture um, I'm going to read you is in John 11, and it's verses 17 to 45, and it's the account of um, Lazarus. And it says, um, so this is when uh, Jesus went after Lazarus was uh, found. It, it was reported to him that Lazarus was sick, and then it was reported to him that Lazarus had passed away. And so um, they, Jesus held back going to Bethany, 
um, interestingly, until uh, Lazarus had passed away, so now he's just arrived. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. After she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Uh, Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. And so that's the two bits of scripture that uh, tell us a bit about what Martha was like. And this little section here, this little character study gives us a list of Martha's strengths and weaknesses. And I tell you what, I'm glad that there's not a book somewhere with a list of my strengths and weaknesses um, because it might not make for good reading. But this is what it says about Martha. Her strengths and accomplishments. She was known as a hospitable homemaker. She believed in Jesus with growing faith. She had a strong desire to do everything exactly right. Her weaknesses and her mistakes. She expected others to agree with her priorities. She was overly concerned with details. She tended to feel sorry for herself when her efforts were not recognised and she limited Jesus' power to this life. And so, lessons that we can learn from Martha's life. A couple of things they list here. One, getting caught up in details can make us forget the main reasons for our actions. And two, there is a proper time to listen to Jesus and a proper time to work for him. So um, I think this is really quite interesting and um, I hope you've enjoyed that little snippet of uh, insight into Martha's life. And let's just pray and we'll finish our devotion there today. Father God, we thank you so much for uh, the characters that we see in your word. Lord, these people who um, lived and walked the earth, Lord, at the same time that, that you were here. Lord, thank you that through their interactions we can learn things about ourselves as well. Lord, thank you that um, all of the people that we see in your words, you know, none of them were perfect, Lord, and that's a great encouragement for us because we're not perfect either. Lord, I just pray that as we go on uh, in these days, Lord, that you would lead us ahead, that you would um, be our guide and be our um, shepherd indeed, Lord, as we were hearing about the other day. That, Lord, you would, yourself would be the one that would teach us by your Holy Spirit. I just thank you, Lord, that you don't leave us the way we are, but that you do change us. 
you transform us from one degree of glory to the next. And I pray, Lord, that you would help each and every one of us today to have that discernment, Lord, to, to tune into what your Spirit is saying so that we would know when is the time to just stop and sit at your feet like Mary did and when is the time to go on and, and be busy and, and be involved in things as Martha did. Help us to have the right balance for that, Lord. We surrender all that we are before your throne today. In the precious and lovely name of Jesus. Amen. Well, bye for now, folks, and uh, we'll see you the next time.